Okay, geometry, we're moving on into section 5.6 right now, which is the most important section in all of chapter 5. And what we're going to talk about here is uh, is one basic idea right here, guys. And we call the title of this section Inequalities Just in One Triangle. 5.7 deals with some inequalities involving two different triangles. But for now, in each one of these problems, we're just going to be drawing one triangle and trying to find something important that happens within it. So the first thing we're going to talk about today and I hate doing this on the video because there's a, there's a nice little experiment I would have loved to have you guys do if we were live in school for right now. And it should work on the app that I have on my iPad here, but for some reason I can't get it to work out. So anyway, I'm going to ask you guys to trust me on this, and I'm sorry I hate doing that. But here goes. Theorem 510 and 511, I'm going to kind of combine into one big concept right here, guys. And it says the following, that in any triangle that you can draw, the longest side is always going to need to be opposite from the largest angle. The shortest side is going to need to be opposite from the smallest angle, and then the middle length side is going to have to be opposite of the middle size angle. So what I really wanted to do was to use this app called GeoGebra, uh, which is a website that you guys can go to on your Chromebook or anything else like that. It's got a funny spelling to it. It's G-E-O-G. E B R A. So geogebra.org. And as you can kind of tell, this is a made up word that's kind of a combination of algebra and geometry. And so what I'm doing right now, guys, that unfortunately you can't see, is that I'm drawing a diagram on my computer here, my uh, my laptop computer, which is not what I'm recording on right now, and I'm putting three points here, A, B, and C, and I'm connecting them with line segments to draw a triangle that looks something like, oh, dang it, that looks something like this. Okay, so I'm going to draw it like that, and like that, and like that. And I've called this point A, this here is point B, and this here is point C. And what, for some reason, I couldn't get to happen on my iPad here is that I wanted to measure the distance of all of the line segments that are out there. So I'm going to do that on the computer right now, and then I'm just going to come on through here and, and write them down. Uh, but one thing I need to do is change the precision. I think just one decimal place is probably good enough. So I've labeled, or excuse me, I've measured these uh, line segments here. And my computer's telling me that the way I've drawn AB has a length of 3.4, okay? BC down on the bottom is going to have a length of 6.3, and then AC is going to be 8.2. Now, what I'm hoping you guys see right away is that it looks like this triangle here is scaling, and in fact, the numbers bear that out. It's got three different side lengths. No congruent sides means that it's going to be a scaling triangle. And the next thing I'm going to do now is measure the angles uh, within this particular triangle. So if you guys will bear with me for just a second, we've got that. Uh, let me measure angle B now. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure angle C. And that's going to look something like this. Okay, so for this, let me switch to red now. And according to this, everybody, uh, my measure of angle A, I'm rounding here to the nearest whole degree, everybody, because I think that's going to be sufficient for our purposes. I've got A drawn at about 46 degrees, B rounds to 112 degrees, and C over here looks like that one is going to be 22 degrees. All right, so that's what we've got. I'm going to ask you guys just to trust me on this one. And let's talk about that theorem that we just discussed here a moment ago, and hopefully you guys wrote down and see what it says. This theorem now says that in any triangle, including the one that we just drew, the longest side needs to be opposite from the largest angle. So as we look at this, uh, let me go with, uh, with something blue right here. The longest side in this triangle is the 8.2. Pretty clearly, that's bigger than the 3.4 and bigger than the 6.3. And the first part of that theorem said that the longest side is always going to be located opposite from or across the figure from the largest angle. And sure enough, 112 is the biggest angle within that triangle, and it's across from the 8.2. So that kind of seems to, to support what this theorem said. How about the second thing? I'm going to switch to uh, green now. And, the, and now it says that the shortest side is always going to be opposite from the smallest angle. So let's take a look at this. The shortest side 
looks like the 3.4 over here on the left, line segment AB, and sure enough, the angle across from it, the 22 degree angle right over here, that is the smallest angle. And the third part then, which just kind of has to be true by process of elimination, uh, let's go to something we haven't used. How about this lovely shade of kind of a fuchsia right here? Says that the middle length side has to be opposite from the middle sized angle. So out of the three sides, it's the 6.3 that's the side in the middle, and this 46 degree angle across from it is the middle size angle. And what I really wanted to do right now with you guys is have you move these points around, which obviously you can't do if you're just writing this on paper. But what we'll find is that with every single triangle that we could ever come up with, this relationship is always going to hold. That the longest side is always going to be across from the biggest angle. That happened here with angle B and then side AC on the other side. The smallest side, 3.4, always has to be across from the smallest angle, 22 degrees, and then the middles are always going to work out as well. So that is one of those kind of irrefutable facts, everybody, that always has to be the case. So let's take a look at what's going on here with an example. We're going to list the sides of triangle XYZ in descending order. Hopefully that's a word you guys know. Descending means top down, basically from biggest to smallest. So we have a diagram here with three angles, X, Y, and Z, and the measurement of each one of those angles has been given, but only in terms of N. We've got to figure out which of these sides is the longest. Well, to do that, we need to figure out angle measures first, and we're going to take advantage of one irrefutable fact that we always know. In every triangle, the sum of your three angle measures is always, always, always 180 degrees. So let's make an equation now adding those up, everybody. So that's a 3n plus a 41. We'll add the second angle here, n plus 12, and we'll add the third angle, 6n plus 7, and the sum of those three must be 180 degrees. Okay, the 3n plus 1n plus 6n is going to give us 10n. Uh, let's see, 41 and 12 is going to be 53, plus another 7 is going to be 60. So we get 10n plus 60 equals 180. We'll subtract that 60 from both sides and get a 10n is equal to a 120. Divide by 10, and we're going to get n equals 60. Now, a lot of times, people want to pack up shop here and say, okay, we got it done. Well, no, 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 we solved for n, but we're not even close to answering the question yet. Next thing we need to do is use this new value of n to find the measure of each of the three angles. Okay, so as I look at this, uh, I'm sorry guys, I just realized my n value was way wrong right there. I'm not sure where that came from. Sorry about that. When we went to divide both sides by 10, maybe I should actually write that out so I don't goof that up again. All right, Mr. Fontana, let's try that again. We end up now with n is equal to 12. That seems more likely. Okay. So now, let's take that value of 12 and let's put it back in. For example, angle Z right here, N plus 12. Well, if N is 12, 12 plus 12 tells us that angle Z has a measure of 24 degrees. Angle X up here on the top of that figure, 3 times 12 is 36, and 36 plus 41 is going to get us 77 degrees. And then over here on the right, 6n plus 12, well, 6 times 12 is going to be 72. 72 plus 7 is going to be 79 degrees here for the measure of angle y. So what we need to know, everybody, is that for the sides to be written in a certain order, it's going to follow the order of the angles. So let me go ahead and write the angles in descending order first. We know that angle y is the largest angle, followed then by angle x at 77 degrees, and lastly, angle z is the smallest. So you might even want to write that down here. This is the largest angle over here on the left, and this is the smallest angle over here on the right. So those are the angles in descending order. But now we're supposed to list the sides in descending order. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Using that theorem that we just discussed, the longest side in a triangle always needs to be across from the largest angle. So if this 79 over here is the largest angle, 
the longest side needs to be this one over here across from the figure, and that is line segment XZ. So that has to be the longest side in the figure. Next, angle X here is the middle sized angle. So across from it needs to be the middle length side, which is gonna be line segment YZ. And lastly, angle Z here is the smallest angle, so across from that over here, which is line segment XY, that one needs to be the smallest side. So this right here, guys, would be the answer to the question. The sides of triangle XYZ in descending order are XZ, that's the largest side, YZ is the middle side, and XY is the smallest side. And we got that by really finding the order of the angles first, and then from the angles we were able to convert that and figure out something about the line segments themselves. This next problem is one that a lot of people look at and they think is relatively easy, and we tend to have some trouble with this one. So the directions here are to find the shortest segment in the entire figure, but what's harder about this problem compared to the last one is that there are two, excuse me, two triangles involved here. Now the two triangles share one side, that's line segment BD, so there's actually five different possible answers to this question here. And what you really need to do here is put aside an assumption that a lot of people want to make, whether they verbalize it or not. Um, but let's approach this kind of, kind of straight up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the measures of the missing angles within this figure. If I take a look just at triangle ABD, this one up here kind of on the top left here, guys, so triangle ABD goes here and here and here, we know two of the three angles within that figure, 110 and 32. So I'm grabbing my calculator right now, guys, and I'm going to take 180 minus 110 and minus the 32 degree angle. And that tells me that my third angle here has a measure of 38 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing now over here on the right with triangle BDC. Two angles are known, so I'll take 180 minus 114 minus 30. And that tells me the third angle there has a measure of 36 degrees. All right. And this is what we're dealing with now. Now, here's the tricky thing here. We know all of the angle measures within this figure. And what a lot of people want to do is they take advantage of that idea that says that the shortest segment is across from the smallest angle. And they say, okay, now guys, don't write this down because it's wrong, and I'll explain why in a second. But a lot of people look at this and say, aha, 30 degrees is the smallest angle in this entire figure, so the side across from that, which is BD, has to be the shortest segment in the entire figure. And their reasoning is simply that because 30 is the smallest angle, BD has to be the shortest side. The problem there is that we're trying to take a, a concept that applies to just one triangle, and we're trying to apply it to a setting with two triangles. All right, and that's the issue right here that doesn't quite work out. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and list this out in a couple of different ways here, guys. All right. Um, let me just go ahead and write this out here. We have two different triangles here. So the shortest side in triangle A, B, D, I want to list that out. And then I want to follow that by writing what is the shortest side in the other triangle, which is triangle B, D, C. Okay, so the theorem that we learned here only applies to one particular triangle at a time. And we can work it here in each one. In triangle ABD, the one I have in yellow, the shortest angle is 32 degrees. So that means that line segment AB has to be the shortest side in triangle ABD. If we take a look at triangle BDC, the one on the right, then what we said before was true for that triangle. 30 degrees is the smallest angle, so therefore the side opposite from that, line segment BD, has to be the shortest side in that triangle. So what we've done here, guys, is we've come up with two potential answers. Only one of them is right, but the answer has to be one of these two. But now the question here is this. If we think about the hierarchy of all the other sides out there, how do we know the relationship between these? Well, if I go back and focus just on the yellow triangle, ABD, we can see that BD 
everybody, this side right here is also a side in that first triangle. And what's across from that? A 38 degree angle right over there. So if we just focus on the yellow triangle, we know that line segment AB has to be shorter than line segment BD, or its measure has to be less than that, because we can compare sides within that one triangle right there, because we know the 32 degree angle and the 38 degree angle. So what I said a moment ago is that these two answers are, are your potential like nominees if you want to look at them that way. But since BD is found in that yellow triangle as well, we can tell that AB is shorter than BD. That has to be the answer here, not BD. And it's because that yellow triangle contains both of the potential shortest sides. And we're able to compare them directly and find out that this AB here one is actually the shortest. So you got to do a little bit of digging on problems like that. Okay, the next theorem we're going to talk about is theorem 512. And the formal name for this one, everybody, is the triangle inequality theorem. Now, I like to call this the T-Rex theorem uh, for a way that's not going to work very well over a video, but I'll try to explain it in just a second. Okay, what does it say here, guys? The sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. It has to be. So in any triangle that we draw, and it doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is, your three side lengths, I'm just going to call A and B and C here, with no distinction as to which one is the shortest and which one is the longest and which one is in the middle, but it must always be the case that the sum of any two sides, like for example A plus B, that sum has to be greater than the third side which is C. The same thing happens if you were to add up B plus C. That sum has to be greater than the third side, which is now A. And likewise, the third possibility, A plus C, has to be greater than B. All right. I call this the T-Rex theorem because of what happens if this doesn't work out. And real quickly, I won't dwell on this, but I want you to think about what's funny about a T-Rex. Great big dinosaur with tiny little arms. And if the T-Rex tried to clap his hands, his arms or his fingers might not even touch each other. They might just kind of flail around there and we'd look pretty silly if we were, if we were illustrating that. And so the point I want to make is this, guys. What if I gave you three side lengths in a triangle. Uh, and I just said the side lengths here were two and three and 10. I want you to think about what would happen if you tried to make a triangle with side lengths of two, three, and 10. So I'm going to go ahead and take the long side, which is 10, and put that down here on the bottom. And the issue would be, is it possible to make a triangle that looks like this with side lengths of two and three? And the answer is no. What I've just drawn is impossible, and let's talk about why. What would happen, guys, if you tried to draw a side length of two and three? Well, let's take a look. My midpoint right there, everybody, of that side of 10, uh, it would be a length of five. And uh, I'm not sure if I can do this here on the iPad. Let's try this. If I wanted to make a circle, why is there not a circle tool right here, really? Huh, that seems odd. There must be another tool for that. Is there a way to slide this? No, that was very strange. Okay, that's maybe not going to do what I wanted it to do. Can I do a oval right here? No, no, I don't think that's going to work out either. No, not the way that I wanted it to. Okay, well, again, this doesn't work quite as well as it would on the smart board, everybody. But real quickly, let me get rid of some of this junk right here. If we were going to start from this point right here in our triangle, and I called that point A, to make a side that had a length of 2, everybody, again, this distance from A to that middle point is 5, so a side with a length of 2 would maybe only go to about there. Okay, trying to get the scale right, if this whole bottom side, let's say from A to B, had a length of 10, then maybe this little 2 that I have would be right over here. Now, starting from B, Another side length with a length of 3 would be a little bit longer than that, but still less than the 5 here, so maybe it would be something like 3. And in order for there to be a triangle here, I'd have to take point C and point D and somehow get them together to actually meet. 
And what I think you guys can see here is there's no way to get this thing to actually meet and form a triangle if one of these sides has a length of three and the other side here has a length of two. Those two little arms right there, guys, AC over here on the left and DB over here on the right are never going to come together. The only way that could work is if these two sides right here added up to be bigger than this side right over here. Like for example, let me try to redraw some of this here. And if I put a 10 down here on the bottom now, what if I said, all right, what if I gave you something like six and seven and 10? Now, my side that has a length of six would go more than halfway. It'd be longer than the five right here. So I don't know, maybe something like that could work with a length of six and my seven could maybe be right over here. That can actually work because the six and the seven add up to 13, which is bigger than this third side. All right. So that's the triangle inequality theorem, guys, that the sum of any two sides in a triangle has to be greater than the length of the third side. So let's see this in action. These are basically going to be yes or no questions, which I think you guys are going to like. Can a triangle with sides of 5, 8, and 14 exist? Well, for this to work out, the sum of any two sides would need to be bigger than the third side. Now, don't write down what I'm about to do here, guys. But if I were to take 5 and add that to 14, is that going to be greater than 8? Yes. Likewise, if I did 8 plus 14, is that going to be greater than 5? Yes, that one works as well. But those were both kind of obvious because I took the biggest side, which was 14, and I added it to another number. And yeah, it was bigger than one of the smallers. The real thing that you guys need to check here is what happens when you add up the two smallest sides? 5 plus 8. Is that sum going to be greater than 14? And the answer to that one right there, the two smaller sides, is a no. That is not greater than 14. And so for that reason, the answer to question A here is a no. You can't have a triangle with sides of 5, 8, and 14 because the sum of 5 and 8 is not greater than 14. These things did work out over here on the left, but that's not what you need to bother checking. You need to make sure that it's the shorter two sides that add up to be greater than the longest side. So let's do that on B. The short two sides here are 11 and 13. And the question is, is that sum greater than 15? Well, 11 and 13 is going to be 24. 24 is greater than 15. Yeah. So this one right here in B is a yes. It is possible to have a triangle with side lengths of 11, 13, and 15. And the last one, I just think is kind of interesting here, guys. 7, 7, and 7. Can you have a triangle with those three sides? Well, if it's a tie between any of your side lengths, then it doesn't really matter what goes where. Is 7 plus 7 greater than 7? Well, that's going to be a 14. 14, last I checked, is greater than 7. This one is going to be a yes as well. But you guys should be thinking about something right here. If you notice what I gave you, all three sides in this triangle are going to be congruent to each other, which makes it an equilateral triangle. So yes, an equilateral triangle can exist with any side lengths, regardless of how big or small they are. This still would have worked if I gave you the numbers 2, 2, and 2, or even 1, 1, and 1, or a million, a million, and a million. The sum of your two sides is going to be greater than your third. OK, let's talk about what's going on in this example here, because you are going to see a couple of these on your homework here as well. Find the range of possible values for X. I'm going to give you guys the quick explanation, then I'll give you the slightly more detailed one. But here's basically what we're looking for, guys. There are some values of X that are not going to work here. For example, well, let me write these in red, as that's generally a negative color. X can't be 100, everybody. Why not? Because when you add up the two smallest sides, 8 and 5, you only get 13. 13 is not greater than 100. So that doesn't work. Uh, what else? X can't be 2. Because now when you add up the shortest two sides, which are the 2 and the 5, 
those numbers add up to 7, 7 is not greater than 8. So 2 doesn't work either. My point there is, guys, that there are going to be a lot of numbers that are too big to work and a lot of numbers that are too small to work. All right, so we're looking for a range of possible values for x. And what that's going to look like, you guys saw some of this last year in Algebra 1, it's going to be something called a compound inequality. It's going to be something of the form a is less than your x value, which in turn has to be less than your b value. And there's a really quick and easy way to do these problems, guys. a is simply going to be the difference of these two numbers right here. And let's not forget, difference means subtraction. 8 minus 5 is going to get us 3. So that's your lower value, your a. 3 has to be less than x, which in turn has to be less than b. And the way we're going to find b is by adding these two values together. 8 plus 5 is going to get us 13. And that right there, guys, is the answer to this question. x can be any number in between 3 and 13. Let's pick one. Can x be 6? Well, in that case, your three side lengths would be 8, 5, and 6. Add up the two smaller ones, 5 plus 6, and ask yourself, is that greater than my third side, which is 8? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, what if I had done 8, 5, and 12? In this case, all right, add up the two smaller ones, which now are the 8 and the 5, and 8 plus 5, is that greater than 12? Yep, that one works out as well, just like this one did. But this range of values, you'll notice here, guys, from 3 to 13, 100 doesn't work because it's bigger than 13, so forget about that one. The 2 doesn't work because it's smaller than 3. So that's the quick way to do it, guys. Subtract the two numbers and get this value. Add the two numbers and get this value. And you know what? I'm going to spare you the long, boring explanation on that. Speaking of sparing you, we used to do problems that looked like this, but I think for this year we're going to skip this stuff as well. So we're going to end this one right here. Let's give the 5.6 homework a try, everybody. Let me know if you guys have any questions. It's an important section. We want to make sure that we get it right, but it's not all that bad to get the hang of. So good luck on the homework, and let me know if you guys have any trouble.